Uh, it is my honor to introduce our next segment, uh, and I'm grateful to be joined uh, by my fellow NIHB Board of Director Chairwoman Amber Torres and longtime advocate for Indian Country, a true leader. Um, and, and also we have uh, two amazing uh, leaders nationally, uh, United States Senator Tom Udall and uh, Senator uh, Chuck Schumer. And we are appreciated uh, for your time uh, in these important discussions. In our discussions, we will look uh, at the case before the US Supreme Court that is in all of our minds. The current challenge uh, is to the Affordable Care Act, which will be heard, uh, which will be heard uh, before the Supreme Court uh, one week after the presidential election. As we know, our tribes, our people have prepaid for health care. We have treaties that require the federal government to cover our people's care for the next seven generations and beyond. Despite this, once again, our health care is in crisis. And on November 10th, the Supreme Court will hear oral arguments in California versus Texas, a lawsuit centered on the future of the Affordable Care Act. This case is uniquely impacts Indian country. As many of you know, the Affordable Care Act permanently reauthorized the Indian Health Care Improvement Act in 2010. The law touches every part of the tribal health system from healthcare, the workforce, to funding levels, and to care for our veterans. The stakes could not be clearer. If the Supreme Court rules against the Affordable Care Act, all of the strides that we have made in our people's health over the past decade and the work of our past leaders will be lost. Over the next half an hour, we will discuss health topics related to lawsuits and what they mean for our Indian health care. But before we start, I would like to invite uh, Senator Udall to uh, provide some opening remarks and share a little bit about the gravity of this case for Indian country as well as uh, Senator Chuck Schumer, and then followed will be uh, Chairwoman Torres. So, uh, Senator Udall, if you don't mind. Uh, Mr. Lewis, I think Senator Schumer is going to lead off, and, okay. and uh, okay. he's just going to be very brief, and I'll follow him. Okay. Thank you. Senator Schumer, you're on. Thank you, and I want to thank uh, Vice Chairman Udall for recognizing this panel. He has been such a staunch defender of Indian country and uh, I have often followed his lead um, and will continue to follow his lead even when he's no longer senator because he knows more about Indian country and cares more than just about anybody else. So I'm sorry I can't stay with all of you um, uh, the entire time. I only asked to speak for a brief moment. I know you have a very busy and important program um, uh, that you, you should know that Senate Democrats from one end to the other recognize the importance of the Affordable Care Act for Native communities, and we're fighting to preserve it. Whether it's Medicaid expansion, protection for Americans with pre-existing conditions, protecting Medicare, protecting for two spirits. Um, my, daughter is, my daughter and her wife are worried that their rights will be taken away with the loss of RBG. Uh, whether it's marketplace enrollment flexibility for Natives, we are fighting for all of these things. The ACA uh, is a landmark law. It's helped improve native health. It's given the cash strapped Indian health system a much needed revenue source. That's one of the, so many reasons it's so important. And as you know, we stopped them from repealing it in the Senate a few years ago because we care about it so, and we're gonna do everything we can to preserve it. I wanna make one more uh, pledge to you that if I become majority leader, God willing, the election's in a few weeks, and this is not a political call, but I can remind everyone to vote. Make sure you vote. Make sure everyone in your tribe votes and everyone else. We will fully fund, if I become majority leader, we will fully fund the Indian Health Care Service. We will ensure that ACA remains the law of our nation, and Democrats will protect the trust responsibility to provide health care to natives for the treaties we have made. That's unequivocal and we will do it. So thank you for letting me say a few words and let me turn it back. Let me say goodbye to everyone and have a good rest of the conference. And let me say, turn it over to our great leader, Senator Udall. Hey, Senator Schumer, thank you so much. And I just wanna tell everyone 
that Senator Schumer and his staff do incredible reach to tribes around the country. They have a number of meetings a year. They have been very, very active in trying to find out what the needs are in Indian country. And the commitments you've just heard from him will be very, very important to Indian country. So it's absolutely critical that we know what's at stake for native health care if the ACA is repealed. And I want to start here by thanking Councilman Lewis, thanking him for the introduction. And I know uh, that we also have uh, uh, Chairman Amber Tautis of the Walker River Paiute Tribe to take President Naz's uh, place. And uh, that will happen after I give my remarks here. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. As um, Chairman Lewis just said, and I agree, there's a lot at stake right now as Republicans try to fill Justice Ginsburg's seat just days before a presidential election, including the potential destruction of the Affordable Care Act. If Judge Barrett is confirmed to the highest court in our land, it will absolutely have deep and lasting consequences for Indian country for years, potentially even for generations. This is because the Supreme Court is scheduled to hear oral arguments in early November, as was noted by Councilman Lewis, in a case called California versus Texas a lawsuit that could result in full repeal of the Affordable Care Act. Judge Barrett has criticized the Supreme Court's previous ruling that upheld the ACA's constitutionality, a ruling that preserved health care access for over 2 million American Indians and Alaska Natives. Her confirmation threatens to eviscerate the ACA gut pre-existing condition protections for millions of Americans and throw the Indian Health Service into chaos. As many of you have you as many of you have seen in your communities, the ACA, while not perfect, literally saves lives. The ACA permanently reauthorized the Indian Health Care Improvement Act and expanded access to health care for Native Americans through marketplace exchanges, through Medicaid expansion, and increased revenue for the Indian Health Service. All of those things have made a real difference. I believe that confirming a nominee who will dismantle the ACA will exact a cruel toll on Indian country and will leave Native communities without the tools they need to fight the COVID-19 pandemic or serve their most vulnerable members, their veterans, elders, and those with chronic health conditions like diabetes and cancer. I believe this, I believe this because I heard it from all of you in 2017, the last time the ACA was at risk of appeal. Back then we were debating a partial repeal of the law and I convened an emergency round table to hear from tribal leaders, native health practitioners, and the NIHB board. The message was absolutely clear. Even a partial ACA repeal would be debilitating to native health care. Now in 2020, we're facing a potential full termination of the ACA, and it could be devastating. So when we're talking about what's at stake with the Supreme Court and the ACA lawsuit, I think it's important to realize and emphasize that Native health, we're talking about your community's health is what is at stake. And I hope today's panel will be an opportunity to dive in and get a sense of just how much is on the line. So thank you so much for inviting me today. And Chairman Lewis, either back to you, or I guess we're going to uh, Chairman Amber Torres. Kijo Wamua, me Amber Torres, Minania Nu Agarikara Poinibi Nu Agaigwe. Good morning, everyone. My name is Amber Torres. I'm the chairman for the Walker River Paiute Tribe in Shurs, Nevada. First of all, Senator Udall, thank you for sharing more information about what's at stake with this lawsuit. 
As always, thank you for being one of the most committed champions of tribal sovereignty in the United States Senate. We know this is a very busy time for you, so we really appreciate the time that you have with us today. This case impacts every corner of our Indian health system. But I'd like to start by talking about what this lawsuit means for our efforts to respond to the COVID-19 pandemic. The COVID crisis has significantly impacted American Indian and Alaskan Native people. Hospitalization rates among our people are 4.4 times higher than for whites. Our people continue to have the second highest COVID-19 death rates nationwide. COVID has posed tremendous challenges for our tribes. COVID shut down our businesses for months, bringing our revenue resources to a screeching halt. Our tribes have lost millions per month in third-party dollars from payers like Medicaid and private insurance, which are critical given the chronic underfunding of Indian Health Service. In addition, much of Indian country lacks a strong public health infrastructure because, because tribes were left behind when the United States built its public health system. As a result, many of our tribes have limited public health capacity, workforce, and surveillance resources. In the Senate, you led a bill introduced earlier this year that would make tribes eligible for the CDC Public Health Emergency Preparedness Initiative. You have also been a champion in fixing standing, long-standing issues in tribal access to public health data regarding our own people from federal, state, and local partners. We are glad you support the Bipartisan Tribal Health Data Improvement Act, which would greatly help in addressing these issues. But depending on the outcome of this case, these gains could come under direct threat. To that end, I would like to share a question. What would the loss of Indian Health, Indian Health Care Improvement Act and Affordable Care Act mean for our COVID-19 response at our respective tribes and for all of Indian country? Senator, you're on mute. The quote for 2020. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Chairwoman, um, I was trying to, to uh, fiddle with something uh, here on the screen. I was getting messages that were blocking out what I was seeing. So what I could, uh, could you tell me um, what you, uh, what you ask or? Sure, sure, uh, I, can, I can repeat the question for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. What would the loss of Indian Health Care Improvement Act and the Affordable Care Act mean for our COVID-19 response at our respective tribes and for all of Indian country? Yeah, I, I think, uh, and you, yeah, I'm off mute now. First of all, um, the, the repeal of the Affordable Care Act, as, as everyone knows, the, the Indian Health Service it was permanently funded. And then we were allowed to have third party revenues in terms of uh, coming in from all sources, including the federal government and federal, other federal government agencies. And so that took the Indian Health Service from a position, you remember the, the old saying in Indian country used to be don't get sick after June or July, because there's no more money. Well. The Affordable Care Act through that specific provision added a lot more money into the Indian Health Service. It's not enough right now. And you heard the, the statement by Leader Schumer and I totally back that up and I'm gonna be fighting that for the rest of my life to get the Indian Health Service up to at least where the veterans are. You know, the Indian Health Service is funded at about one third of what the veterans health services agency is funded. And so if you're underfunded, you can't do the things that you need to do. So that's number one. It's extremely important in terms of, of funding the Indian health, health Service. The other thing that uh, was done under the Affordable Care Act is allow the Medicaid expansion to work across the country and within Indian country. And as you know, 
Medicaid is a very effective program where you have a state and you have the federal government or a tribe, federal government, all cooperate together to get health care to the people that need it the most. So that's tremendously important in terms of uh, where we go uh, on this particular issue. So the Affordable Care Act in a number of other ways, and I just wanted to hit those two big ones, in a number of other ways helps out tribes and has improved the tribal situation in terms of health care. The final point I just want to make has to do with exchanges. Uh, we didn't have exchanges before the, the Affordable Care Act. Many of these exchanges are available to Native Americans across the country. There, you get affordable care on the exchanges. The repeal of the Affordable Care Act, Act would wipe out exchanges. So anybody today that has ex is on an exchange that was created by the Affordable Care Act, that's how they get their health care. That opportunity is wiped out, and then they're going to have to search for another place, and I, I imagine uh, it will be much, much more expensive. And then let's let's just hit one final thing, which is tremendously important. We have this uh, condition in America known as pre-existing conditions. That meant if, for example, uh, Chairwoman, if a woman had cancer and then recovered, the insurance companies before the Affordable Care Act could say, oh, you had a pre-existing condition, you had cancer, we're not gonna cover you. It, and so already today, and we know this is big, uh, a big issue in Indian country, many people have had coronavirus and have survived. I think the number is 8 million across the country. That is a pre-existing condition. So no longer with the Affordable Care Act will pre-existing conditions be prohibited See, the insurance companies were using pre-existing conditions to cut their costs, to not give good care, and to really uh, kind of push their profits up, which is not good for normal uh, health care uh, people that are seeking health care, and especially in Indian country, where we know Indian Health Service has been underfunded. There aren't the kinds of health care clinics that we need across Indian country. Although the tribes, and let me just say this, I think the tribes have made incredible progress in terms of 638 clinics and other kinds of clinics to really move forward in a dramatic way to get health care closest to the individuals who live right in a tribal community or on a reservation or in a extremely rural area in Indian country. So those are some of the impacts. As I just want to repeat again, the words that have been used here could be absolutely devastating. It would throw healthcare and Indian country into chaos. Uh, you all need to spread the word. This uh, woman judge who's being sent up uh, is already said that she doesn't like the Affordable Care Act. There was a ruling and she said she didn't agree with the ruling. So I hope... Uh, um, Chairwoman uh, taught us that that answers your question, and I'm happy to listen to anything else that anybody has to say on that subject. So thank you. Yes, most definitely. It would be devastating effects to Indian health. Um, now I'd like to turn the time over to talk about Medicaid expansion and what it has meant for Indian country. We all know about chronic underfunding of Indian health services. In 2018, IHS spending was at roughly a third of national health spending per person. Medicaid has not only kept our systems running, but it has led to serious gains for our people. Between 2013 and 2018, Medicaid coverage for our people jumped 12 percent, uh, I'm sorry, jumped 12 percentage points. Now, over half of our people are enrolled in Medicaid. This, had led, this has led to significant gains in third-party revenue for our systems. In fact, in 2019 alone, IHS brought in over $1 billion in third-party revenue. For many of our tribally operated health programs, 
Medicaid collections can equal up to 60% of our healthcare operating budgets. With these additional dollars, our tribes have expanded healthcare services for our people, renovated our healthcare facilities, purchased new and modern medical equipment, and launched new health programs. The Indian Healthcare Improvement Act gave our IHS and our tribal systems the authority to bill payers like Medicaid. Meanwhile, the Affordable Care Act provided incentives for states to expand Medicaid, which has led to more coverage gains and revenue sources for our people and our systems. Lots of these authorities would be devastating for Indian country. Given these concerns, I do have one question. What does Medicaid expansion mean for our tribes? And what's at stake if the Affordable Care Act is repealed? And I know you kind of touched on it before, so if you could just, oh. you know, again, add a few more points to that. Oh, absolutely. And, and um, Chairwoman Tortoise, you, you hit it on the head in terms of what Medicaid has done uh, for Indian country and how it's improved situations. Let me just hit a couple of uh, Medicaid expansion funding statistics. IHS Medicaid billing increased by approximately 21% since FY 2012. That's a dramatic increase in the amount of money uh, flowing into the Indian Health Service. Medicaid reimbursements now represent 67% of third party revenues uh, at the Indian Health Service federally operated facilities and 50 to 60% of the operating budgets at tribally controlled IH facilities. So you can see what a tre tre tremendous impact uh, Medicaid expansion has had on tribes. And I, I just want to tell you, as the lead Democrat in charge of IHS appropriations, I've been fighting with, uh, for Indian country to reform the IHS budget process, address the chronic underfunding that plagues native health systems. As we've all pointed out several times, the Affordable Care Act has been a life-saving stopgap while we work to address those appropriations issues. 95% of all tribes are located in ACA Medicaid expansion states. And, and the point there, remember that some tribes didn't take the Medicaid, excuse me, some states did not take the Medicaid expansion. What's really lucky for tribes is 95% of all tribes are located in ACA Medicaid expansion states and 53% of IHS patients are now enrolled in Medicaid. But even outside of IHS impacts, there are almost 300,000 Native Americans that have healthcare coverage thanks to the ACA Medicaid expansion. That includes tribal members that can't access IHS services. I remember hearing a story from a young Laguna mother in 2017, when we were fighting ACA repeal in the Senate. She enrolled in New Mexico's Medicaid expansion program when she left home to enroll in grad school. That coverage was critical for her prenatal and maternity care. Stories like those are so critical. ACA repeal isn't just a political football or a budget issue. We are talking about real people's lives on the ground every day. Thank you so much, Chairwoman Tortoise. Thank you, Pijat, you. Uh, thank you, Senator Dell, for those questions to those important uh, areas. Uh, one thing, as a veteran myself, uh, I, I signed up for the United States Navy when I was 17 years old. So veterans, uh, things uh, are really important to me. And so I'd like to take uh, a little bit of attention of yours and ask about uh, healthcare for Native American veterans. Our people enlist and serve and defend this country at the highest rates per capita. And we have served with honor, distinctions for generations, defending tribal sovereignty and the entire United States. And to be clear, many challenges remain towards improving care coordination and health outcomes for our Native veterans. Our Native veterans continue to face significantly higher rates of suicide, 
PTSD, homelessness, and other health issues. But one fact remains, we have made great progress in this area thanks to the provisions in the Indian Healthcare Improvement. The law led to significant improvements in access care at both the VA and IHS for our Native veterans and authorized reimbursement agreements between IHS and the VA and between tribal health programs and the VA as well. Now, according to our information, 116 tribes have reimbursement agreements with the VA. Tribal VA reimbursement claims increased nearly threefold between 2014 and 2018, bringing in more than 121 million to the Indian health system for more than 11,000 native veterans enrolled in the VA services. But like everything else we have discussed today, these essential programs and services would be lost should the Affordable Care Act and the Indian Health Care Improvement Act be repealed by the Supreme Court. Uh, Chairwoman Torres and Senator Udall, I'd like to open it up for discussion on this uh, critical topic, it, uh, specifically you, Senator Udall, and hear your thoughts and, and comments about health care for our Native veterans. Sure. Thank you so much, uh, Councilman Lewis. And the point you hit that really resonates with me is how patriotic uh, Native American veterans have been. Even through all the things that have happened uh, where the Anglo culture coming in dislocated Native Americans, uh, there was genocide, there were all sorts of things that were going on that were tragic and horrible. And yet, when it came to fight for this country, more Native Americans stepped forward in, on the basis of population uh, than other population segments. And I, I see this uh, patriotic uh, mood, I see this uh, patriotic dedication in my 23 tribes as I travel New Mexico. So I, I just, uh, say, first of all, my hat's off uh, to Native American veterans. If I was in a, a meeting now where we could uh, ask people to stand up, normally when we talk about veterans, I ask them all to stand up, say which war they fought in, and they get a standing ovation by everyone. And so that's how strongly everybody feels about Native veterans. Let me also say, Native veterans are more likely to be uninsured or have service-related disabilities than other groups. That means that strong IHS-VA coordination is absolutely critical. I convened an Indian Affairs Subcommittee hearing on Native veterans issues last November. Both the IHS and the VA testified about the positive impacts of ACA provisions and, and how those provisions have made such a, a positive impact on Native veterans' healthcare access. This is really striking. Everyone agrees, even President Trump's administration, that the ACA is critical to Native veterans' health. And the progress we've made with these ACA Native veterans' provisions has inspired bipartisan efforts in the House and in the Senate. I've got a bill to expand the ACA's IHS slash VA reimbursement authority to include urban Indian health programs. And my colleague from Arizona, Congressman Gallego, is leading a bill to require the VA to reimburse IHS for purchased or referred care. These Native veterans' bills would be completely derailed by the ACA repeal. This decade of progress to improve Native veteran care would be undone. So I can't emphasize strongly enough the repeal of the Affordable Care Act would be devastating to Native veterans and would cause chaos to Native veterans' health care. And I would yield at this point uh, to uh, Chairwoman Tortis. Yes, thank you for those words so very much. 
Um, I will keep my remarks brief. I just want to say our Native warriors took care of us, and now it's our time to fight for their privileges and their rights. So thank you so much. Thank you both for that. I mentioned uh, when it comes to veterans, having uh, served eight years honorably in the Navy, I am uh, I'm proud of my, my brothers and sisters that served and, and seeing what they go through and and how they, they often feel left behind and that all the sacrifices that they, they may, made um, are, are, they don't matter. Um, they, they do feel left alone a lot. So uh, thank you uh, for those comments when it comes to our veterans. Councilman uh, Lewis, thank you for your service. And we should have a virtual round of applause for you and your service and all the veterans that may be on this uh, call or maybe uh, listening to it. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you. And in, and in closing, Senator Udall, we know that you're retiring at the end of this Congress. On behalf of the National Indian Health Board, we thank you for your tremendous leadership in the United States Senate on behalf of tribal nations and all of Indian country. You have served in so many essential roles to tribal nations and native people over your tenure including as vice chair of the Indian Affairs Committee and ranking member on interior appropriations. You have always been a steward defender of tribal sovereignty and our Indian health service system. We are so grateful for your many years of service. Indeed, the fight is not over. We must take the fight to all congressional leaders and the entire United States government. Our treaties have no expiration date. Our health care is not up for debate. And we will take this call to action to defend our health care and protect our people. This concludes our discussion on the California versus Texas lawsuit. Thank you so very much. Thank you for everything you've done for Indian country. Pijat you. Thank, Chairwoman Torres, thank you so much for those kind words. And I just want to reassure everybody, uh, I'm not retiring. I decided not to run, uh, but I, I wanted to have a new chapter, and believe me, a part of this new chapter is working with Native American tribes here in New Mexico and across the country to make progress on all the issues that you face, to stand up for tribal sovereignty, to make sure that the government truly does a tribal consultation, and that we move forward with the, the incredible effort that tribes have put forward for self-determination, wanting to take control of their tribes, of their land, and of their decisions for themselves. And uh, you all may know that Congress created what's called the Udall Foundation that has a significant portion of that activity of mentoring young Native Americans in leadership in Washington with an intern 10 week internship program and scholarships in the area of native health and other uh, native policy. And so I'll be working there and in many other areas uh, in the future to make sure uh, that Native American uh, tribes, uh, I want them to know uh, that I stand with you and I will continue to stand with you. And thank you uh, so much. This has been a wonderful panel and all of the speakers, it's been great to be with you today.